All right, so we're here with Kirk Cousins, and this is what I do. I try and really, you know, make things happen out here in the NFL. So <laughs> we're going to get your contract done. <laughs> Number one, what's it going to take? Well, it's going to take a good year this year. How about that? No, no I'm talking financially. <laughs> what do we need here? I'm getting this done. How many? Uh, okay, how many years? How many years are we going to get this done for? Oh, man, I think one, I'm good with one-year deals right Really? Now. You're, yeah, you're doing I, this? I think I've proven that. You like the franchise thing. <laughs> I've been good with it so far. i got to keep playing well. What if we are for you, by we I mean not the Redskins, <laughs> me, but um, mm, 450 an hour. <laughs> what's, what's like 450 an hour, but we'll throw in that car you were talking about before and all the cafe latte you could drink. We're throw good? in the bus throw and in the, the bus. dog and I'll be good. <laughs> you know, I'm not giving my dog. That's, <laughs> Dog's see, that's why you can't get your deal done because you're trying to get my rescue <laughs> yeah, pit. Absolutely right. not. I go right at your heart. <laughs> <laughs> So, do you really, I mean, I know you, you go back and forth. Uh, you're going, hey, one t I'm good with franchise tender, it's great. And I think today you said that, no, I want to remain in Washington for the rest of my life. Give me ideally what it would be for you, though. Well, I can, I can remain in Washington for a long time on one-year deals. So, <laughs> it doesn't have to be, you know, the, the long-term deal where everybody knows what's going on years out from now. I think that in this league, we don't know. So. I'm good with the one-year deals, but if it, if those one-year deals can be here, I think that's my ideal scenario. Really? So you'll keep doing franchise then? If that's my best option, which to this point has been my best option. But you don't worry about what if I tear something? What if I get hurt? Well, I mean, risk is a part of football, but at the same time, uh, I was taking much bigger risks a couple of years ago playing on league minimum. Mm -hmm. um, you know, now I'm in a much better place, and, and there's insurance policies and things like right. that that you can do to help help leverage yourself. Talk about it because I always find it fascinating. Obviously, look, in order to play this game, you got to be a little crazy, sure. right? And you have to have a huge ego, and I'm saying that in a good way, not a bad <laughs> way. I'm saying in a good way, right? You yeah. got to think, hey, man, I'm the baddest dude out there. And in the meantime, you're negotiating with guys that you're looking across the table with every day of your life who are trying to tell you why well, you're not worth it. <laughs> how do you? How have you managed yeah. coming into the building with that, you know, that soap opera going on? Well, I think that's what we talk about. It's professional sports. We've got to be professionals, okay? This isn't amateur athletics anymore. So we talk a lot around the building. We challenge young players, and we say, be a pro. You know, this isn't a hobby anymore. This is your job. Come to work. Be a pro. Have class. Rise above any adversity or anything that may upset you, and just go to work and, and, and conduct yourself well and represent this organization well. And on top of that, there's been really good communication between myself, my agent, the team, uh, management, and as a result, we're all on the same page. We, we've all respected one another through the process, and it's really been a positive thing all, all through it. Somewhat respect through the process. <laughs> Somebody got your name wrong, and one time I saw <laughs> your general manager called you Kurt. I don't know how that happens. Yeah. I think we're going to have to tack on a couple more. Yeah, it happens. But I heard, he, uh, I heard he, uh, he said it right the other day. So we're, <laughs> he got we're, we're, right now. We're making, I'm improving as a player, and we're making improvement all around. It is interesting, though, because I've had, obviously, a lot of friends throughout the year who have gone through contract, and they're... They swear, I'm never going to go back again. That's it. I want to see this GM again. I want to see the head coach. That's it. And all of a sudden they get done, and it's like, it's fantastic. And I've only seen a couple of times where guys haven't been able to get through the, the resentment over what's said in negotiations. Sure, sure. So has there been a point for you where yeah. you're like, I, I, I'm, I need to stay away for a little bit here <laughs> so I don't, they don't get... Yeah, no, that's, that's a great question. I think people don't realize that, you know, in many negotiations it can become like that. In my case, I stay out of it. You know, I hired my agent. I don't want to hear what they're saying. I don't want to know because a lot of it is posturing right. and they don't necessarily mean it. And so I've told my agent, you know, don't, you don't need to tell me all that stuff. Just help guide me as to the right big, big decision to make and, and all the rest you can handle. So that's why you get the agent is to be that buffer. All right. All right. Tell me, you guys were, you know, made strides last year. Um, Tell me why this will be Kirk Cousins, the Redskins year, and this is the, the year that you guys will do what the Cowboys did a year ago. Sure. Yeah, well, I think our fan base certainly is hungry and ready to see us take another step. And I think that next step is to, to you know, get to the playoffs and to win games in the playoffs. And, you know, we can't do that right now. You know, right now I'm just trying to take another step towards week one, and um, that's where my focus is. So uh, I that's, like that. That is the worst <laughs> vanilla cliche answer in the history of life. You know what? I'm just knocking off $1,000 off your contract right here as a result of that. Right. I'm, that's all I'm going to give you, man. So I'm going to lose a lot of money right here as I do this interview. But, uh, no, it's, it, you know, we, we got good players, uh, experience. There has been a very little attrition. You know, guys like Jordan Reed, Vernon Davis are coming back. Rob Kelly's got another year. Chris Thompson. Our offensive line is the same group right. that 
finished last season is starting this season. So pieces like that, not having to start over completely is a good thing. Now we have a couple new receivers, but for the most part, I like the fact that we have a lot of continuity both on our staff and in our locker room. But how do you push those guys? Because you didn't get, you're, again, you have a lot of the same players you had last year and you didn't get the results you're looking for. Sure. So how do you push it to the next step? Well, we're all getting better. I mean, this is why we go through OTAs and training camp. I'm a much better quarterback right now in mid-August than I was you know, in January when we finished the season. So I have a lot more practice under my belt, been through several more situations and, and learned. And so I'm better, Jordan's better, Josh Doxon's better, Terrell Pryor's better. And I think all that improvement has got to lead to good things. Now, you look around at our division in the NFC East and everybody's getting better. And it's a, it's a, a beast of a division. So we do have our hands full, but uh, we're excited about the group we have. One of the things I think you don't get enough credit for, because people just forget, man, you have been through Mental health-wise, a lot. I mean, <laughs> the RG3 stuff, oh, my goodness, right? And people forget about that. The contract stuff here, the playoff last, loss last year, yeah. you've got to be really mentally strong to be able yeah. to deal with all that. Yeah. How do you? And what was the hardest sure. thing for you to, to be able to rise above? Well, I think I never walk, walked into a football practice or a game expecting it to be easy. So I think knowing that it's going to be a grind has helped because I prepare myself for that. I'm not caught off guard when it, it right. inevitably happens. Coach Shanahan used to say, tough times don't last, tough people do. And I love that phrase. I, I truly believe that you know if I can choose to be a tough person, I can make it through. But uh, that tough time, that interception, that loss, that benching, whatever it may be, is going to pass. Right. And you guys got to hang on and keep working. And, you know, my story has certainly uh, made that made that statement true. You could write two books right now. You realize that, right? <laughs> yeah, maybe that next book will have to come out when I retire. I would like to be your author for that. That would be good. Because the stuff that, I mean, you can't make it up half the stuff. I know. It's you know? been quite a journey. But it's been a fun fun journey to be a part of and makes, like you said, for a great story to tell when it's all done. How did your, uh, how do you guys change not having Sean McVay here? Sure. Well, it's Jay's offense. So fortunately, from a play calling standpoint, terminology standpoint, everything stays the same. Now, Sean had a major role in the last couple of years, make no mistake. I mean, he was the engine. He was the one calling the plays and designing a lot of them and was the one, you know, coaching me on a day-to-day -day basis. But at the same time, um, having Jay, having Coach Kavanaugh, our former quarterbacks coach, now be the offensive coordinator, there's still a lot of continuity and a lot of key pieces on our offense that are, that are still there. So I'd like to think that we're going to be able to keep moving forward. And, uh, you know, while Sean was a huge asset, we've got some good people in place. Brought to you by DraftKings.